Welcome to another FPL video. We're going to be covering Game Week 4 yet again, but instead of the best wildcard team, this is going to be the best team exclusively for Game Week 4. So this is ideal for anyone who is considering using the free hit chip. And there were actually a few people who requested this video. Of course, it's not going to be anywhere near as popular as the wildcard. And by the way, thank you to everyone who's been supporting that video. There's over 23,000 views, I believe, at this moment in time. And, you know, it's just been absolutely insane. So appreciate everything um, about that. But... We're going to be talking about the best team uh, that you can make for this game week. It's not the one on screen once again. I'll be showing it very soon. But without further ado, let's head straight into the video. There are different ways you can go about it, of course, and I'll be discussing a few alternatives uh, to this team uh, because there's no one set way of playing FPL, and the same goes for the best team you can make for a certain game week or even long term when you're looking at the wildcard. So I'll be discussing those few changes. And just to let you guys know, uh, I have launched memberships on the channel. For those of you who were interested, you can literally just click the join button on my channel on the home page, and there are different tiers, and you can get exclusive access to specific perks. But of course, the content will will always remain free you do not have to do it it's only if you want access to those perks and if you just want to support the channel even further so I'd appreciate if you took a look but you don't have to do anything and also in terms of the data I use in all of my videos they all come from Fantasy Football Hub and I do work for them I write for them and also edit uh, you can check out my work in the link in the description below and there's also an affiliate link which you can use to join Fantasy Football Hub uh, so if you are interested take a look I particularly like the Opta Stats tool which breaks down every club and player and it's just a very good tool to use to be honest same with the comparison one uh, where you can compare two different players or more depending on you know what you want to do and you can have just key access to all the key statistics uh, that you need for FPL um, so yeah some very good tools on there some very good articles from some of the best fantasy managers and same with uh, just very very good writers to be honest but let's go into this uh, team and I'll be honest, in terms of goalkeepers, maybe Sanchez isn't the best one this week. So if we actually take a look at the fixtures, I'd probably say maybe Spurs have a better chance of a clean sheet against Crystal Palace. Maybe even Arsenal. I know that sounds very stupid right now, but trust me, there is a chance. Um, and then you can arguably say Man City because their defence is so good. Uh, De Gea uh, for Man United against Newcastle. Um, even maybe Jose Sarr uh, against Watford, or that's maybe a bit out of um, the kind of... Uh, what kind of reaching a bit too much there then Mendy of course you know playing in probably arguably the best defense in Europe against Aston Villa and maybe even Allison against Leeds or Pickford against Burnley but Sanchez at 4.5 million I think has the best chance of a clean sheet um, however if you do want to I'd probably recommend Mendy the most if you have the money to go up to him otherwise if you want someone a bit cheap and invest the funds elsewhere Sanchez is good enough in terms of the defense I would highly recommend a double Chelsea defense for this game week and even if you're kind of looking long term having one Chelsea defender is definitely something I'd recommend um, despite the tough fixtures in game weeks five and six uh, the defense is so good Alonso is playing every single game at the moment I'm not so sure how long that's going to continue but he's pretty much perfect for a free hit um, obviously if he doesn't play you do have other options with this team to kind of cover and Christensen he's someone who's been mentioned a lot in the comment section and he's definitely great value so long as he plays I think he's fairly nailed but not completely um, of course it's a bit more optimistic now uh, with the transfer window closing and Chelsea not signing yet another centre-back uh, Jules Koundé didn't end up moving to Chelsea so Christensen can continue to play he was man of the match against Liverpool I'm not so sure about that but he got the Sky Sports man of the match and I think Rudiger's more nailed but if you don't want to go for him you can just go for Christensen now Marcel is not someone I'd start by the way um, in this team but he's someone who can cover on the bench and he's got a fairly decent fixture in Watford I think Watford are capable of scoring about 4.5 million you can always go for Marcel if not you can just go for Tanganga or Eric Dyer if you have enough money in terms of how much uh, money I have available with this I've got 0.1 so arguably instead of Marcel maybe go for Eric Dyer who's got a bit more of a chance of a clean sheet the reason why I haven't gone for Sanchez is because he's actually traveled with Colombia 
uh, for the World Cup qualifiers and that means he's going to be missing game week four. And then when you look at Tanganga, for example, Spurs just signed Emerson Royale, and I believe he's not going to be travelling with Brazil. I'd have to double-check that. And if that's the case, Emerson could then become uh, the first-choice right-back for Spurs, and Tanganga will drop out. It's obviously a bit harsh because Tanganga's been very impressive in the first few game weeks, uh, so keep an eye on that situation. You can always go for him, uh, but if not, Dyer will be nailed. He should continue to start. Uh, but yeah, Dyer or Tanganga, go for one of them and you should be fine against Crystal Palace. And if not, Marcel at 4.5 million or Cody are completely fine. Then we have Shane Duffy. This is a bit of a weird one because I'm not so sure if he's going to start in this game. If we kind of have news about Veltman not being fully fit or returning for match day four, at least in the starting lineup, then I definitely recommend Duffy as your fifth defender. He's just cheap and he's the best around 4.2 million or under. But in terms of the actual clean sheet chance... I wouldn't back Brighton that much uh, for a clean sheet against Brentford to double up on their defence. So Duffy would literally just be a bench option in this case. And if not, if you don't have enough money for him anyway, you can just go for Livermento or Brandon Williams at Norwich. Although just don't expect too many clean sheets from either of them. And then Luke Shaw, uh, the final defender who would start in this team. Um, yeah, I just think he's got so much attacking potential. A very good fixture in Newcastle. And with Ronaldo coming into the side, finally, maybe, Shaw's crosses are going to be converted so promising times potentially for Luke Shaw and I think for game week four he is a great option and he could produce his first double digit haul of the season so at the moment I'd be starting Sanchez, Alonso, Christensen and Shaw you can still go for Dyer or whichever Spurs defender you choose and also another thing you can do with this team I do have well I've got zero million now uh, but if you do have a bit of money in the bank you can go from Christensen to Region and change elsewhere uh, but that would be my defense at this moment in time. Moving into the midfield, 4.5 million options. It's just bench fodder, but you can go for Sissoko. Maybe he'll be one of the more promising ones. There's Brownhill, Basuma, Gilmore, but we need to see more from those 4.5 million options. We're kind of deprived this year. Uh, we don't have any standouts like Cantwell in the past or Salchek and all these sorts of players uh, or Smithrow, for example. Uh, but we'll look at the actual main four midfielders and it looks really strong in my opinion. So we've got Mohamed Salah, great captaincy option this week and I'm considering to captain him myself, especially if I don't bring Ronaldo in for my own team. Um, he's just... Fantastic stats for Salah all the time and even if he has a quiet game like he did against Chelsea, he can get a penalty or just one moment of magic and produce the business. So Salah is definitely a fantastic option. Leeds, despite having Lorente back in and they're going to be a bit more solid defensively, I just, I'm not convinced by them this year, at least from a defensive standpoint at this moment in time. So Salah is definitely someone I just wouldn't go without, even on a free hit, and I definitely recommend him. Then there's Jota. Firmino's injury isn't actually as bad as initially feared, but it should still be enough or severe enough for him to miss out and Jota should continue to start. He's been in very good form and a double up in Liverpool attack I think could be a great differential and of course you can still go for Trent in, in defence. I don't have him in this team. He's always kind of a one of the best options every single game week really um, but if not Salah and Jota should be more than enough and I think that's where the bulk of the points will come from in that fixture. And then we have Mason Greenwood. Now this is probably the kind of controversial pick in this team a lot of people think with Ronaldo coming back into the side Greenwood won't start um, up front and he might not even start because Sanchez on the right but in my opinion this is something I said in my best wildcard team video Ole Gunnar Solskjaer might opt for Sancho on the left Greenwood on the right and Ronaldo up top I think they can coexist in the same team of course long term Greenwood is going to be a bit of a concern in terms of minutes uh, but I think for this fixture I think he can do extremely well I think he's going to start and he's just been in great form. He's been scoring the crucial goals for Manchester United. I think it'd be very harsh for him to be dropped, similar to Tanganga, which I discussed earlier. Um, so I think having Greenwood and Jota is a fantastic asset to have. Just having both of them, you pretty much have the two best around 7.6 or 7.7 .7 million. Then we have Ben Rama, the forgotten man, really. We were talking about him so much in game weeks one and two. I still think he's a great option. He's not going to be sustaining um, the kind of goals and assists he was um, at the, towards the beginning of the season anyway, but he's still a fantastic option and I definitely recommend him. And around this price, he's still uh, one of the best. If you don't want to go for him, you could maybe go for Damari Gray and double up on Everton attack instead against Burnley, who at the moment have the worst defensive stats of any team, with Arsenal in 19th place, uh, by the way. Uh, but yeah, I think Ben Rama is a great option. And if not, just go for Damari Gray. Looking at the forwards, Calvin, Lewin, he's pretty much 
the second best attacker so far this season behind Antonio in terms of XG, shots, shots in the box, and all of those good numbers you want to hear. He is an injury doubt, so I wouldn't be getting him in just yet. Of course, if you're playing your free hit or wild card, it's not really too much of an issue, but even then, he may drop in price at some point, uh, so keep an eye on that situation. Uh, but if Calvaloon is fit, I think he's probably one of the best outside captaincy shouts this week, and he's definitely someone I'd be bringing in him or Damari Gray, I just think having one Everton attacker makes sense against Burnley. It's a fixture where Everton could score two or three easily, um, so I definitely recommend Calvert-Lewin. I wouldn't be captaining him myself, but he's definitely a fantastic option and someone to consider for sure. Then we have Ronaldo, scored twice against Ireland despite missing a penalty towards the end, and he's now the record-breaking international goal scorer. I mean, this guy just scores goals. That's pretty much it. And I think he's going to start against Newcastle. I believe I saw somewhere uh, some news about Ronaldo potentially missing the second game for Portugal so he can arrive in Manchester earlier and be ready for the Premier League. So I think he's going to start against Newcastle, uh, if you ask me personally. That doesn't mean he definitely will. And he may even come off the bench. But in my opinion, he'll start. And if he does, he's definitely the standout captaincy option this week he could easily get a double digit return, you know, to mark his arrival in the Premier League once again. I think he's definitely got everything stacked in his favour. Newcastle have been very poor defensively and West Ham put four past them and they're a very good team, by the way, West Ham. Manchester United could easily do the same thing and don't be surprised if Ronaldo scored a brace or a hat-trick, of course. I wouldn't be jumping the gun on him and definitely don't just bring him in early because you think there's going to be a price rise. He's not going to be rising in price. He's going to be fixed at 12.5 million, so... Don't go out of your way to kind of undo your team and uh, potentially put yourself at risk in the future by making early transfers unnecessarily. Ronaldo should stay at the same price. Then, I mean, this is kind of a no-brainer, really. Antonio, at the moment, he's the first man on the team sheet. So any little, uh, you know, best team video I do, Antonio's going to feature at this moment in time, unless he has a really difficult fixture. He's just been the man, really. Most points, highest XG. I keep saying these stats, but, you know, you don't want to kind of break them down too much. They're kind of just the main things you want to look at. And Antonio has the numbers to sustain this period of form uh, well into uh, the second half of the season, really. The problem I have with Antonio is long-term, when the Europa League comes into the mix, that might be an issue. But for the time being, Antonio is the best option you can go for in attack just the value he offers is insane. He can also get assists, uh, so Antonio is definitely the real deal. Imagine if he took penalties as well. I mean, that is a very scary sight, to be honest. I mean, I know he missed one in game week one, uh, but of course, if he can remain on them and score them, Antonio is definitely someone um, to look out for. He could even reach the 20-point mark in a game week, but that is my team at the moment. If you want to go a bit different to this, you can always go for Reguilon instead of Christensen. You can go for Mendy instead of Sanchez. Uh, there's different things you can do. Instead of Duffy, you can go for maybe a cheaper defender. If not, you can go invest a bit more money at the back and then maybe invest a bit less in your defense or your midfield or attack, should I say. And then there's Lukaku. I haven't spoken about him. I think he could actually be the highest scoring player this week. It's just really difficult to fit him and Ronaldo in. It's still possible. You might have to downgrade a midfielder like Jota or Greenwood to achieve that. But it's still worth, you know, considering Trent Alexander-Arnold is always one of the best options every single game week. He's someone that maybe you think, I just can't go without, even on a free hit. That's completely fair enough. Damari Gray instead of Ben Rama, I think that Everton could put two or three past Burnley. So it's worth doubling up on their attack potentially for game week four. So those are kind of my thoughts about the best team you can make for game week four. And it's ideal for those on a free hit. Let me know what you think of this team. What would you change and... Yeah, who would you captain in this? I definitely would be captaining Ronaldo, by the way, and my vice captain would probably be Salah. If I had Lukaku instead, he'd probably be my vice captain over Salah. But of course, you can go for any one of them, and it's not really a bad decision. And to be fair, you know, the Palace Spurs fixture, I'm forgetting about Son and Kane. You can always go for them as well. I still think that they're great options despite Kane uh, not producing a return so far this season. I think actually game week four could be the time uh, where he marks his first goals of the Premier League this season. But you can't have everyone. This is the kind of beauty of FPL. And yeah, I mean, it's just about deciding who you want to go for. And that's why we have a budget. We've got these restrictions for a reason. And it just makes the game even more interesting. But thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, smash the like button and subscribe if you're new around here. I really appreciate all the support, as I said before. I really mean it. And remember to keep on sharing this video around with anyone who loves FPL, UCL Fantasy and football. There's going to be more content coming to the channel. And let me know down in the comments, do you want to see a live stream later this week with an updated wildcard team? I'd definitely be interested. And if you lot are as well, 
then that's something that we can arrange and then we can find the perfect time uh, for the subscribers uh, to tune in and then we can just keep talking about your teams as well as also the wild card and what is the best team we can make for the long term. But yeah, really appreciate all the support and I'll see you next time.